We're just going to have a couple quick words from Mufti Abdullah here, the Imam al Waqar. One of the Imam al Waqar. Guys, chill out. You guys can sit down, whatever. Relax. Chill, chill. Just, inshallah, if everyone can pay attention. If everyone can pay attention, mashallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is a lovely scene, mashallah. We are here for this uh, Saleh Uncle Memorial Cup. I just want to say two things very quickly. Well, one is actually in regards to our uh, brother Saleh. Right? When this event takes place, obviously, the memory of our brother Saleh is revived. All of us, most of us, We've seen him, we lived with him, we saw him. He would be here now if he was alive. How long has it been? Just over a year where he has left this world. MashaAllah, his sons and all of those who were uh, very acquainted with him thought of establishing this memorial cup. We should all remember him. This is a time for remembrance. It's memorial cup meaning in rem. rem in memoration of Brother Saleh. So I want to ask everyone here to spend some moments, we, we won't say moments of silence because our silence, we don't stay silent, right? Our mem memory of the deceased, our moments of silence should be filled with prayer. So I want to request myself and all of us here to spend a couple of minutes, we will recite Surah Al-Ikhlas. Everyone knows Surah Al-Ikhlas. We will recite Qul Hu Allahu Ahad three times. And insha'Allah, we will make an intention. The reward of this recitation is sent to our brother Saleh. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has informed us that when we pray for the deceased, when we do a good action, a good deed, we can convey the reward of that good deed to the deceased. And the deceased in his grave or her grave, when they are presented with this reward, they are overjoyed. So just like the way we enjoyed the whole day today, inshallah, this is a, do a day in which Brother Saleh in his grave will be overjoyed by all of us presenting this gift to him. The angels, they bring the virtue of this recitation to the deceased and they say, so and so has prayed for you, this is a present for you. And this would be a day of rejoicing even for him in his grave. So inshallah we should all recite Surah Al-Ikhlas three times. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد. إن شاء الله we should all make this intention that what we just recited may Allah convey the reward to our brother Saleh in his grave. And we should also understand that as much as we would want him to be here, I don't think he would want to be here. Right, the sons. I think he is in a much better place. Even they would agree. I believe, inshallah, that his grave is a garden of paradise for him. When you get to paradise, you don't want to come back to this world. So inshallah, he's in a place where he is much more, he is in much more pleasure and ecstasy than he would ever be in this world. So he wouldn't want to come back here. And this brings us to our first point, is that his life, like he, we celebrated, cherish it in this, in this world. His life in the grave, which began over a year ago, we don't know how long he's going to be in the grave. He could be in there for 100, 200, maybe 1,000. We don't know. His life in his grave is going to be longer than he lived in this life. His life on the day of judgment, 
the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the day of judgment one day is equivalent to a thousand years of this world. It's going to be longer than how much he lived in this life. His life in paradise is an eternal life, which is obviously longer than our short life here. Point is that our life in this world is very short. The life after death, like Brother Saleh's life, after death is much longer than this life. And this should bring us a certain understanding in us believers that the same way we work to uh, enjoy this life, to make this life pleasurable. There is a life to come after death that Brother Saleh has already started and we will all one day transition to that, that life. It will be, how can you say it? It will be unfair if our children, me as a father, as a mother, if our children, we go out of our way to prepare them to enjoy this life, but we do nothing for the everlasting life after death. It would be highly uh, inappropriate, unfair to these children that the way we are working for their life in this life, that we have no concern of how they will live after they pass on. So this is something we should take to heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all this realization that we as Muslims, as believers, even though we may enjoy this life, but we never forget our faith teaches us, and we are not ashamed of this, to acknowledge that the same way we prepare for this life, to have the best life here, we're also simultaneously preparing for our next life, which is far more important for us. We prepare. How do we prepare? We pray. Right? Just like during our hours of play, we take time out to pray. Our play doesn't stop us from praying, right? The same way. So we should not be shy of showing our understanding of the life to come, our preparation for it. May Allah give us all the tawfiq. Secondly, very shortly, I want to congratulate all of the organizers here, especially Brother Saleh's sons, and then everyone else, I can't name everyone, who has made this possible. All of the kids here, you should appreciate what the organizers have done here, the coaches and everything else right because you know this is something that i could probably say i'm jealous of right because all of those you know we could say elderly people that are here who grew up in the 80s and the 90s like we could never imagine something like this in the 80s we used to go out with our toothpick uh, hockey sticks we used to play hours and hours but we didn't have coaches to coach us this is why we're probably better than all of you um, <laughs> Yeah, we learned individually, right? Um, uh, but this, this was never possible for like the whole Muslim community from all over Toronto to get together like this. We couldn't even imagine this, right? So this is, uh, I could say like back then, those of us who would spend our days and nights on the hockey court, we were looked down upon. Like we were like the, uh, you could say the um, what, can, what can you say? The misfits, right? We were the ones that were mischievous, always on the hockey courts. We didn't come home, right, till late night. All of that, like, people would criticize us a lot, I can remember, right? Um, but now when I look back at it, when we get together, like kids of my age from the, from the 80s, and we start talking to one another, and we remember all of that, and we say that was actually a great blessing. Like coming out to play like this, spending quality time with friends outdoors, this is now actually a blessing. Right? And all of the parents, I, I, I think, will agree with this. That to get kids away from their video games, away from the internet, away from the TV, and to get them to participate in physical sports, this is actually a blessing now. And therefore, this is why I want to congratulate all the youth of this community who have made this possible. This is a great blessing. And I encourage you to continue to help these youth, to continue to allow them to enjoy these physical sports because it is absolutely important for them so that they realize what true, meaningful, real interaction is. So that they come out of their virtual world 
and learn how to live the real world. May Allah make it easy for all of us. Allah, thank you for listening to me. Jazakumullah. Jazakallah, Mawlana, for the kind words.